in the end is my beginning. These are the last words of a poem by T.S. Eliot, part of his masterpiece, Four Quartets. In my end is my beginning. The women who come to the tomb are told that they in turn must tell the disciples and Peter that they are to go to Galilee where Jesus is going and where they will see him. The disciples are to go back to the place where it all began, by the lake those years before. At the end of Mark's Gospel, they are to go back to the beginning. The end is only the beginning of a new and astonishing story. And that story, the unending story of Easter, will begin where the Gospel began, up north in Galilee. They will return to the beginning, but everything will be changed. Not so much the hills and the towns and the lake. All that will be the same. But the mysterious messenger in a white robe says that they will see Jesus there. It's their seeing that will be changed forever. They will see everything differently. They will have Easter eyes, a new kind of vision, the kind of vision we find in the Gospels where there's nothing pre-Easter, where the whole story of Jesus from its very beginning is read through a paschal lens. The women went to the tomb hoping to see Jesus, to see a dead body. But the promise now is that the disciples in returning to the beginning won't see a dead body, but the body of one who is risen. The women come to the tomb wondering who will roll away the big stone sealing the entrance to the tomb. They certainly saw the tomb sealed and the large stone must have seemed like a cosmic full stop. The end of life and the death of hope. But to their amazement, the stone has already been rolled away when they get there. By whom? We're not told. But even more amazing is the promise that the stone will be rolled away from the eyes of the disciples and they will see Jesus risen. Not as they saw him by the lake in the beginning, but neither as a ghost or some phantasm. We have eaten and drunk with him, says Peter, in what we've heard this morning. Now, however, Jesus will be different. He'll have a body, but of a strangely different kind, unconstrained by all that normally constrains a human body. No one saw the resurrection, and the Gospels give us no hint of what actually happened. But for the Gospels, what matters isn't so much the event of the resurrection as the encounter that follows. The resurrection was certainly an event, but what matters is not seeing the resurrection, but seeing the risen Lord. And that's the promise made by the messenger. The earliest of all Christian creeds was, we have seen the Lord. Mary Magdalene was the first to declare it, and many, many others followed her, as we do. Her declaration, I have seen the Lord, became and becomes, we have seen the Lord. And the church ever since has been the community not of the righteous or the perfect, but of the unrighteous and imperfect who have seen the Lord. Those for whom the stole has been rolled away from their eyes. 
In seeing the Lord, the disciples came to see everything differently. They saw Jesus differently. He who had seemed a tragic failure, an absolute loser, now appears an astonishing victor. Jerusalem, which had seemed the city of darkness and death, becomes the city of light and life. Galilee, which had seemed the place where hopes were stirred only to be dashed, a place where so much was left behind for so little gain, now becomes the place of encounter where they see the Lord and the mission begins, the witnessing of which Peter speaks in the Acts of the Apostles. So too we, baptised into Christ as we are, we see things differently. The church can look like just another clapped out human institution, wounded in so many ways that it can seem almost a corpse at times. But we see the church as the body of Christ, radiant with a life bigger than death, because it's radiant with the risen Lord. The world can look a dark and desperate place, especially in a time like this, when so much has gone wrong and is going wrong. But seeing with Easter eyes, eyes that see Jesus everywhere, even in the darkest places and the darkest times. We can make our own this morning the words of Leonard Cohen. Even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of Song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. To see things differently is to act differently. And that act, that acting, changes not only the physical world, but also the human, social, and moral world. Seeing differently has changed the physical world because of the way Christians have shaped landscapes and built cities and the buildings in them like cathedrals. But it can also change the way we care for the environment, the natural world which is our common home. And that can be a matter of life and death. Seeing differently changes the human, social and moral world because to see the Lord is to see the truth of the human being created in God's image, the inviolable dignity of every man, woman, and child, especially the weakest and the least. Seeing differently can also change the world of creativity and imagination. Think of the extraordinary Christian contribution to music, painting, literature, sculpture, theatre, and dance. Because Easter eyes can see, really see, they open us to the experience of amazement of which Pope John Paul II spoke years ago. He said that it's only in the encounter with the risen Lord, seeing him, that we finally discover the full and magnificent truth of who God really is and who the human being really is. And when we see that truth, we cannot but be amazed. The name for that deep amazement, says the Pope, is the gospel, that is to say, the good news. It is also, he says, called Christianity. The women, once they enter the tomb, 
are struck with amazement, we are told. At some point and in some way, surely we have also been struck by amazement, not because we've seen an empty tomb, but because we've seen the risen Lord. On this Easter morning, new life walks from the tomb and new life stirs in the old womb of the church. May it lead all of us more deeply into the experience of that amazement which gives birth to action and which cries out today and forever, we have seen the Lord. Alleluia.